Now, yesterday I talked to you about the rapture, and as we begin to talk about the rapture, we need to understand something. We need to understand that there's different views, there's differing views on the rapture and when the rapture is going to take place. Now, as I said yesterday, some say, well, there's not even going to be a rapture. Well, that doesn't make sense because the Bible tells us that there is going to be a rapture. We're going to be called up and we're going to meet Jesus in the clouds of glory. So there's no possible way biblically to deny the rapture. Rapture is going to take place according to the word of God. But then there's those that say, well, the rapture is going to take place at the beginning of the tribulation. And that's really the most prominent view. Then there's those that say, well, no, the rapture is going to take place at the midpoint of the tribulation. And no, that's not the prominent view. Uh, that's the growing view. More and more people are believing that. I don't believe that, but more and more people are believing that. And then some say that Jesus is going to return at the end of the tribulation. And that's the least prominent view. Really makes absolutely no sense to me when you begin to think about that. We're going to be raptured. We're going to meet Jesus in the clouds of glory. Then we're going to turn around and we're going to return down uh, to this earth. Now, as we look at that, again, many people believe in a mid-tribulation rapture. That the rapture is going to take place at the midpoint of the seven years of tribulation. And though... They make a pretty good argument. They, they have a pretty good uh, uh, understanding of that. And, and so I could see where they're coming from, but I don't agree with it. And the reason why I don't agree with it, there's many, many reasons why I don't agree with it. Uh, and again, those who believe that, they're not heretics. They're, they're, they're not false prophets. You know, they're, they're great men and women of God that, uh, you know, believe that. And they can come up with a pretty good argument, though I don't believe it. And it's not the prominent view, uh, we, we can agree to disagree on that point. Amen. And so there's many people I love. There's many people I greatly respect that believe that. But the reason why I believe, most prominent reason why I believe in a pre-tribulation rapture is because I believe that the book of Revelation is given to us in a chronological order. So as we look at the book of Revelation and we look at it in a chronological order, I believe God gave to us in the book of Revelation a table of content. And so the table of content is found in Revelation chapter 1 and verse 19. And in Revelation chapter 1 and verse 19, the Bible says uh, right, right there, it says, as Jesus is speaking, he says, therefore write the things which you have seen and the things which are and the things which will take place after these things. And so the things which you've seen, we look in Revelation chapter one and the apostle John gives us a wonderful picture of what he has seen, rather who he has seen. And who is that? That is the revealed Christ. That is Jesus Christ in all of his glory and all of his splendor. Then he says, the things which are. What are the things which are? I believe that is in Revelation chapter 2 and Revelation chapter 3. I believe that that is the church age. And today we are in the, the church age. And so as he's speaking to those seven churches of Revelation, I believe he's speaking to all of the churches of the church age, all the way up to the rapture of the church. And then he says, and the things which shall take place after these things. Now, when does that take place? When does the after these things take place? Well, turn to Revelation chapter 4 and verse 1. And what is the very first phrase there? After these things. After these things I looked and behold a door standing open in heaven and the first voice which I had heard like the sound of a trumpet speaking with me said come up here and, and I will show you what may, must take place after these things. So two times he uses that phrase after these things, the beginning of the verse and at the end of the verse. And so what does he see? He sees a door open into heaven and he hears this voice. It was the voice that he had already heard, the voice that was the sound of a trumpet. And at that time, that voice, he while he was on the island of Patmos, that voice was standing right behind him. He turned around and he saw Jesus standing there. Now that voice is coming out of that doorway in heaven and he's saying come up here friend that 
is the perfect picture of the rapture. After these things, now all of this from this point forward, Revelation chapter 4 forward is future. And what is interesting is that the church is never mentioned again in the book of Revelation. So I believe that very clearly portrays a pre-tribulation rapture.